So the Ten Commandments was released in 1956 and was one of the first epics in the history of cinema. And it was kind of like a Star Wars or Avengers in terms of the amount of money and set pieces and stuff that went into it for that day and age. So it had hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of extras throughout, massive set pieces. It was a huge undertaking that the director, Cecil B. DeMille, undertook whenever he decided to make this movie. It was actually the second time he made a movie called The Ten Commandments. He had made one earlier in the 1920s, and it was a silent version, and I guess he wanted to update it with the modern um, technology of sound and color and things like that, and he released it um, in 1956 for this new version starring Charlton Heston. Now, right off the bat, Charlton Heston, who played Moses, did a fantastic job, um, really, I think, encapsulated uh, the struggle to lead to leave his place in Egypt, to go with the Israelites. I thought he did a really well, uh, really good job. But this movie is not a short movie. This is not one of those you just kind of pick up and decide to watch one night. It's three hours and 40 minutes. So if you're like me, you'll probably break it up into several nights or maybe you'll just decide to push through and watch the whole thing in one sitting. But it's a long undertaking. It's one of the few movies that I can think of that has an intermission built into the movie. I guess for, you know, whenever back in the day, if you were going to see it in theaters, it would give you a chance to uh, get a drink or something to eat or use the restroom. And for this, there's three hours and 40 minutes. Um, there's scripture throughout. The Bible is referenced and quoted throughout the entire picture, which was enjoyable to see, to get to see this massive epic that has a massive budget getting the respect that it deserved in terms of biblical accuracy and um, a big budget, which you don't really get to see anymore, aside from The Passion of the Christ, which was released independently. Uh, you don't get to see these big budget type of movies from a Christian perspective. Now, there were times where the director took some liberties. He never went against what the Bible said, like the movie Noah, but there were some times where he maybe added what he thought maybe a conversation would have been like between Pharaoh and Moses or some interactions here or there that aren't specifically addressed but not unbiblical, if that makes sense. So there's nothing that I saw that was just a flat-out contradiction to what the Bible says, but there may have been times where he added uh, something that was realistically possible for that time period. So like I said, Cecil B. DeMille was the director of the movie. He also, in the very beginning, when the movie just opens up, he gives an opening monologue. He's behind a, or in front of a huge curtain, and whenever he starts to speak, he tells us right off the bat what the purpose of the film is. He says, the theme of this picture is whether man ought to be ruled by God's law or whether they are to be ruled by the whims of a dictator like Ramsey's. Are men the property of the state, or are they free souls under God? This same battle continues throughout the world today. So that was from 1956, and we can still see that there's oftentimes a struggle with this same concept today. Are people the property of the state? Do people exist for the betterment of the state, or does the state exist for the betterment of the people? And throughout human history, there has been a push toward dictatorships, toward the elite or whatever you want to call it, a, a very few basically controlling how the vast majority live. And that's why America, 1776, um, was such a revolutionary thing. And that's why even in the beginning, he also says that this is the story of the birth of freedom. So this is a, a great time to see that these enslaved Israelites who were enslaved by the Egyptians would basically be freed from this enslavement, be freed from the shackles that Pharaoh had put upon them, and they would become free once again. And that is an ongoing struggle in our day as well as back then. You know, there's technically more slaves worldwide now than at any time in history, but because it's not happening where we can see it or it's happening in countries that we don't necessarily think about as often, it's easy to overlook that. But we need to realize that there are constantly going to be people trying to take away freedoms from others. And with that, we have to 
um, not only pray, but do what we can to help resist that. So the movie begins and it gives a quick overview of how God created the heavens and the earth and kind of gives a snapshot view of Genesis 1 and 2 about creation and things of that nature. But then the narrator says, man took dominion over man and freedom was gone from the world. So for all intents and purposes, you know, freedom that God had created them to have was now gone. And um, we even see that this was continuing to happen. You know, the Egyptians did not at the start have a bone to pick against the Israelites, but over time that became more and more obvious. So the Bible tells us where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we see this encapsulated with the um, Israelites in the Old Testament here. As they were following God, they began to experience freedom more and more. The Ten Commandments is essentially a biography pick about Moses, beginning with his birth and going all the way through his death. Now, the first half of this film ends with Moses encountering God at the burning bush. And that was a huge turning point in the life of Moses and his call. And it reminds me of Hebrews chapter 11, where it talks about Moses. And he says, He chose rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. So Moses had an eternal perspective. He wasn't just seeing what was in front of his face, but he was seeing what was before him, how we all have an eternal destiny awaiting us. And Moses chose to leave the riches of Egypt and go with the poor, outcast, enslaved Israelites because he was not just thinking about personal wealth or happiness, but he was thinking about obedience to God, salvation, eternal life, rewards in the next life, and he wanted to be on God's side and not man's. So the film ends with Moses anointing Joshua and charging him to now take the lead over the Israelites. So they're getting ready to cross the Jordan River to head into the promised land. Now Moses isn't going to be going over, so his days are just about over. But before he dies, he wants to make sure Joshua will serve the Lord. You know, so he gives him this charge and he says, and then Joshua replies, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so that's the final scene of the movie. But right before the movie ends, it says, like with the Ten Commandments on the backdrop, it says, so it was written, so it shall be done. Now, that is a line that Pharaoh continued to say throughout the movie. He would say whatever he wanted to do, and then he would say, so it is written, so it shall be done. And so basically he was saying, that's my word, you're going to do it. And so this is kind of, I think, the director's way of saying the Ten Commandments are something that God has given to us. Now let's go and, to the best of our ability, follow it for His glory in obedience and out of love for Him. So although it's a long movie, I think it would be worth it if you ever decided to give it a watch. So this is a story of freedom, and there is freedom both in terms of enslavement that we see, but there's also the spiritual freedom that only Jesus can give that was alluded to in the Old Testament and now seen clearly um, now that he has come and resurrected, that true freedom for a believer is only going to be found in Jesus Christ. So I hope you enjoyed the review. If you get a chance, maybe give it a watch. Okay, until next time, see you then.